The Void Lions chapter tribe, also known as the Great Pride, Leonicene in Artry, or the Leonicenes, are a loyalist chapter of Adeptus Astartes created during the 23rd Sentinel founding in the latter half of the 37th millennium under the name of the Lion Guards chapter. The Lion Guards' homeworld was the jungle-covered death world of Zalep 9, located deep within the eastern fringe, and the peoples from which the chapter was made were the Zalupian predators, as they had become known to the Imperium aggressive and tribal peoples who were rumored to have hunted the other tribes on the planet for sport and as rites of passage. The Lion Guard chapter would lose its homeworld when the Zulub star would unexpectedly supernova, destroying the entire system. It was believed that the chapter was annihilated along with the system and were registered as a lost chapter. However, a chapter would emerge from the Eastern Fringe during the 41st millennium, claiming to be the survivors of the Zulub supernova incident. This chapter would be at full strength, bear different heraldry, and have a different name than the original Lion Guards chapter. Aboard universe-class mass conveyor ships that accompanied this fleet would be hundreds of thousands of Zulupian peoples who had managed to escape the supernova incident as well. This chapter, called the Void Lion Chapter Tribe, sought to affirm their loyalty to the Imperium of Man and demonstrate their competency, which led to the chapter spearheading the decimation wars of the Segmentum Nihilis alongside several penal regiments of the Imperial Guard against the Tyranids of High Fleet Leviathan. The Void Lion's Chapter Tribe is a fleet-based chapter that patrols the boundaries of the Segmentum Solar in the protection of Terra from the various tendrils of the Tyranid High Fleets and Gene Stealer cults. Much of the chapter's past is unknown or otherwise heavily guarded by the Ordo Xenos branch of the Inquisition, to which the chapter is a chamber militant. The chapter prefers to fight alongside the Imperial Guard regiments of the Imperium or otherwise chapters known for their savagery and brutality, as well as chapters relatively unknown to the greater Imperium of Man. The chapter exclusively recruits from its own fleet-based peoples, and the Imperial Guard Regiment created from the Zalupian peoples, called the Zalupian Predators Astra Militarum Regiment, are a registered abhuman regiment and cult of sacrifice. Those forces that fight alongside either of those organizations are sworn to secrecy about the traditions of the chapter, which further develops an aura of mystery about the Void Lions and Zalupian peoples. It is said that the Leonisans have no interest in participating in wars against any enemies beyond the Tyranid Xena species, and that they commit their forces aggressively and single-mindedly to this task. However, they do commit their forces to assist their allies, which at times requires them to combat other Xenus and Chaos forces. Not much information is available to the Great Imperium of Man about the history of the Leonisans. What information is available is fragmented and at times contradictory, gathered from a variety of sources. Zulup 9 was a jungle-covered death world located in the Eastern Fringe as part of the Zulup Solar System. During the latter half of the 35th millennium, various rogue trader, exploratory fleets and expeditions came across the world and recorded their observations. According to many other records, the world was almost a complete jungle, overwhelmed with thick jungles and teeming with large predatory fauna. It was recorded that there did exist peoples on the planet who managed to survive in the hostile environment the world provided. There were dark-skinned and tribal peoples that continuously warred with each other for territory and resources. One tribe was considerably larger than the others, more aggressive, and held large swathes of territory on the planet. Every successive observation made by various explorers and rogue traders into the early 36th millennium noted the tribe only became larger and more aggressive. The totem animal was the Zulupian White Lion, an apex felinate predator on the planet, and they molded their organizations and aesthetic around it, even using it as the subject of rites of passage. However, by the early 36th millennium, it was believed that the tribe hunted the White Lion into extinction and was observed to instead hunt other tribes on the planet to fulfill the rite of passage into adulthood. It was during this time that the group was registered into the records of the Imperium as being called the Zalupian Predators. There were clear signs that civilization had been attempted on the planet, but that any attempts had been abandoned due to the unstable environment. It is because of these discoveries that it is believed that the Zalupian peoples did not originally come from Zulip, but migrated there from elsewhere. Where these people might have come from is unknown, however, the remains of broken down ships that landed on Zulip 9 and the other worlds in the system offered fragmented clues. 
Due to the incorporation of High Gothic in their own language, evidence of which was found among ruins, the population did encounter the Imperium of Man at some point, and the words Azer and Azerai were prominent on the wreckages. Whoever the peoples were, it was believed that they attempted to colonize the Zulip worlds, but only the Zulip 9 colony was successful for a time, before environmental instability forced its halt and the people's regression to techno-primitive tribalism to survive. Many years went by without any further observations of the Zulip solar system by explorers. However, nearing the 38th millennium, a sect with the Ordo Zenus branch of the Inquisition called the French Conclave petitioned to the High Lords of Terra for a chapter to be created from the denizens of Zulip 9 in order to, quote unquote, protect and secure resources valuable to the Imperium in the Eastern Fringe. The petition was passed, and the chapter called the Lion Guards was created as one of the 23rd Sentinel founding chapters of Adeptus Astartes. Though the chapter fulfilled its ties to the Imperium, its operations were heavily shrouded in secrecy by the Inquisition. While it is believed that the Lion Guard battled against Xenus in the Eastern Fringe, it is not specified in any available record which species. The Lion Guards held their vigil for thousands of years before the eventual destruction of their solar system, when the Zulu star would unexpectedly supernova. The chapter would emerge from the Eastern Fringe at full strength, in possession of ancient patterns of carrier ships under a different name and heraldry, led by the chapter master Marzak Isaiah, and determined to demonstrate their loyalty and competency to the Imperium of Man. The Void Lines participated in the decimation wars in the Segmentum Nihilus soon after, alongside various penal regiments of the Astra Militarum against Highfleet Leviathan. Though the battle was won, all forces which participated sustain extreme casualties, including the Void Lines, who appear to have committed and lost an entire chapter worth of marines and ships in the conflict. Despite these losses, the chapter remained at full strength by Imperial standards of Astartes chapters, much to the suspicion of those who recognized this. The current battles and missions of the Void Lions chapter tribe remain secret or obscured by the Ordo Xenus. What is known is that the Void Lions almost exclusively fight Tyranids and Gene Stealer cults that plague the Imperium of Man. The Void Lions chapter tribe is generally Codex compliant, however, their organization has many specific deviations from the tenets laid down by the Codex Astartes. The Leonicean chapter organization is very complex, and due to their very secretive nature, context to the complexity is not given nor understood fully. However, through objective analysis, such complexity can be said to make up for the chapter's compliance with the demands of the Codex Astartes to assist the chapter to be able to efficiently combat such a numerous foe as the Tyranids. The Void Lions chapter tribe is a fleet-based chapter. The sheer size of their fleet as a collective lends itself to why both the chapter and its fleet are both referred to as the Great Pride. At their reintroduction into the Imperium of Man, the chapter was led by the chapter master Marzak Isaiah. However, it appears that the chapter master was killed in an unknown conflict in the Segment and Pacificus, and that the Void Lions have since reorganized. The Void Lions answer directly to the will of the High Lords of Terra. Communication between the High Lords and the chapter is mediated by the Ordo Xenus through an enigmatic Lord Inquisitor Hunter Voln of the Fringe Conclave, the sect of Ordo Xenus Inquisitor that petitioned for the Lion Guard to be created during the 23rd founding. Beneath the High Lords and then the Fringe Conclave, the chapter is divided into three forces to which the Void Lions refer to as tribes. Each tribe is led by their own maimed king, which is what the chapter referred to its previous chapter master Marzak Isaiah. This leads to the belief that unlike other chapters that have one chapter master, the Void Lions have three. Each tribe has their portion of the chapter's strength in ships and astartes and are spread apart from each other in a crescent-like deployment of individual fleets at the border of the Segmentum Solar. Each of the Void Lion tribes has their own name, traditions, specific organization and tribal markings. Each tribe has also claimed vast swathes of imperial space as their quote-unquote hunting grounds in which they hunt the Tyranid Xeno species. While the Void Lions acknowledge the territories of other Adeptus Astartes chapters, they are extremely territorial towards each other in regard to the territories they consider to be their own. Each tribe is led by a maimed king, who typically has three companies of Astartes under his command. The Void Lions refer to their companies as Rampages, and each Rampage has approximately 100 Astartes. However, these numbers depend heavily on the tribe being observed, and has led to much suspicion about the actual number of Void Lions in the chapter tribe overall. 
Two of the three tribes have a Hunter Pride Rampage, which is a portion of the chapter scout company. Each of the tribe's fleets contain a large number of strike cruisers, some serving as escort ships to the main fleet, called Claws. Claws regularly break away from the fleet formations on patrols of their territories. The human serfs of these escort ships are often overseen by Voidline clans, which are essentially squads of veteran lions who are able to operate independently of the greater fleet. The Claw clans are collectively their own rampage within the tribes and are the reach and might of their tribes within their own hunting grounds. The first tribe of Voidlines are the Warblade tribe. Their main king is Pharaoh Aduri, described as noble, honorable, and fleet master renown. Their territory is considered to be the entirety of the Eastern Fringe and the Ultima Segmentum south of the Ghoul Stars. The Warblades of Voidlines are distinguished from the other tribes by their white tribal markings on the black of their armor and black plumes on the helmets of the leaders of the tribe. Visually, it is the largest tribe of the Voidlines and is known for full rampage deployments against the Tyranids and Genestealer cults, largely assault-oriented and accompanied by heavy presence of flyer support. The Warblades are one of the two tribes that have its own small hunter's pride of scout marines. The Warblade tribe has been referred to as the Guardians of the Fringe. The second tribe of the Void Lions are the Longspear tribe. This tribe is led by the main king, Kam Navar, who has been described as terrifying in aspect. Longspear Void Lions are distinguished by their red tribal markings on the black of their armor, but also by their trophy skull collecting, which they adorn their armor with, as well as their practice of growing their hair in long locks that are sometimes dyed white. The Longspears are visually the smallest tribe but contain the largest hunter pride with most Void Lion scouts whose number are not incorporated into the chapter's official number. The Longspears are a heavily vanguard-oriented force and Kamnava bears the most claw ships out of all the main kings. It would appear that scouts in the Longspears tribe remain so much longer than in the Warblades tribe, most likely because it provides the Longspears the opportunity to take advantage of their expertise in infiltration and the headhunting of Alpha Tyranid biomorphs. This tribe has the highest number of veteran ascended marines amongst its ranks as well. Plumes are often a patent black and white on the helms of leaders of Longspear void lines. However, the Longspears very rarely deploy in full rampage numbers or large forces. Second tribe frequently utilizes kilt formations. The territory of the Longspears tribe is the Segmentum Tempestus, ending at the boundary between the Nephilim and Caradon sectors. The Longspears have been referred to as the Eternal Hunters. The third tribe of the Void Lines is called the Falling Axe tribe. It is led by the cold and calculating maned king Bohomar. Falling Axe Void Lines are distinguished by their orange markings on the black of their armor and full white plumes on the helms of their leaders. Falling Axes have an affinity for heavy weapons and are the spearhead-oriented tribe of the Void Lions. They are known for fielding more heavy support units, tanks and machines of war to battle than any other tribe. The Falling Axe tribe contains the most tribesmen encased in the variety of Dreadnought armor, extensive use of technological augmentations, deployment of servitors and possession of older, tougher designs of Astartes armament. The third tribe has the least number of ascended veterans out of all the Void Lion tribes. The territory of the Falling Axis is the Segmentum Obscurus, ending at the Ghoul Stars. A third tribe in actuality is the smallest Void Lion tribe with only two rampages, one of them being composed of the tribe's claw clans. However, casualties among the Falling Axes are low as they field more machines than Astartes and the Falling Axes are known as the Dragon Slayers. The three tribes of the Void Lions have been observed to work in cooperation with each other, calling upon each other for aid when needed and lending support. Each maimed king is able to determine which forces within their territories they choose to make alliances with, and as a whole, the chapter has made many alliances, most of which have been with the various Imperial Guard regiments of the Imperium. The Leonicene in Artree do incorporate Primaris into their ranks, but appear to only do so through having veterans of the chapter endure the Rubicon procedure, adamantly refusing to be reinforced by Grey Shields or to invest Primaris organs into new recruits during their training. The Rubicon procedure is completely successful amongst the Void Lions, however, because not many Void Lions live long enough to reach what is considered to be the veteran status, there are not many Primaris. It appears as though there was a shift in organization after the main king Marzak Isaiah was killed in battle. Previously, the Primaris Leonisans who were ascended to the status of Primaris were the personal tribe of the main king and referred to as the Blood Pride. 
After his death, the Primaris Lions reincorporated themselves back into the structure of the previous tribes from which they came, serving as the personal cadre of warriors to the maimed kings of the different tribes. Instead of still being referred to as a Blood Prince, they are now referred to collectively as the Sweeping Shields tribe. Each tribe of the Void Lions has its own Sweeping Shield tribe. Whereas the Firstborn tribesmen Leonising continue their traditional war against the Tyranids, the Claw Clan veterans engage a variety of enemies, including the Tyranids. However, by tradition, the Sweeping Shield tribe of the Leonising in Archery are the only lions able to hunt Chaos forces and the forces of the Xenos beside the Tyranids. Void Lions retain much of their original Zulupian language, and so the titles had to be roughly translated into High Gothic. Astartes refer to each other as either Lions or Tribesmen. The chapter masters are addressed as maimed kings, while the captains are addressed as black maimed and lieutenants as shadows. Because the maimed kings of the Leonisans are also the fleet masters of the tribe, they are often not able to join their tribesmen on the field of battle or in the hunt. For this reason, the Void Lions have a role called the Face. A Leonisan Face is a captain of the Void Lions who is in line to be the successor of the maimed king should they be killed, and are the battlefield proxy of that particular maimed king. Faces are chosen by the maimed king and are given the maimed king's respect during battle. Chaplains of the Void Lions are called Provokers, and Librarians are called Uthineki, which means Children of the Half-Living, and are also referred to as the Screaming. Veteran Void Lions are referred to as Claws, similar to the Rampage formation that they as a collective form. Primaris Marines have a distinct place within the chapter hierarchy and are generally referred to as Ascended. However, it has been recorded that Void Lions also refer to Primaris among them as the Afraid, the Fearful. There are enigmatic figures few in number among the chapter tribe that are adorned with what appears to be custom-tailored armor to accommodate their unusually immense stature and build. These figures are often the standard bearers of the chapter tribe and tower over their tribesmen, much to the curiosity of those who have seen them. These lines are referred to as Ancients and Chosen. The Void Lions chapter has a complex system of beliefs, many of them stemming from the tribal peoples from which they were created. All of the Zulupian peoples believe in the Emperor as the god of humanity and refer to him as Uthinek, which in their language means the half-living. To them, the half-living is the god of humanity and of death. Uthinek resides only partially in the physical world, his other half in the spirit world, fighting against what the Zulupians refer to as the gods of life. In the Zulupian cosmology, death is seen not as a loss, but as a transition to the spirit world, where they would be reunited with loved ones and where they would fight at Uthinek's side against the gods of life. The collective gods of life were cruel to humans, where they lived and fed like parasites off of human desire to continue to live and were the enemies of humanity. To Zulupians, to embrace death was to embrace the fate of humanity and the will of Uthinek. The way that they embraced this reality was through war. As much as Uthinek was the god of death, he was too the god of war, for it was through war that his peoples were strengthened with experience and delivered to him to fight at his side. These beliefs produced a culture of serious but faithful, enthusiastic and fearless peoples who are unattached to life in particular and who are uninterested in a life beyond war. These beliefs contribute to why the Zulupian peoples are still a complete war culture as part of the Imperium of Man, with most of the Zulupian male youth being inducted into the Void Lions chapter tribe and everyone else being recruited into the Zulupian Predators Astra Militarum regiment after contributing to the people's population and future. The Leonisans, who are essentially Zulupian Adeptus Astartes, share their views of their peoples, however, have a specific chapter cult version of it, which many scholars believe was in part influenced by the Imperial cult when the Zulupians were assimilated into the Imperium of Man at the 38th millennium. Void Lines share all the beliefs of their peoples, but also believe that due to them becoming Adeptus Astartes, their souls were already given to Uthinek in the process of transformation. Essentially, Void Lions believe that by becoming Space Marines, they have forfeited their right to fight at Uthinek's side in the spirit world after death, in order to become the angels of death in life, to better fight against the enemies of Uthinek and humanity. Void Lions believe that there is nothing after death for them but the nothingness of darkness, because without their souls, they are no longer human and they have become like Uthinek, only half-living. However, 
They believed this was a necessary sacrifice, for the fight against the gods of life was physical as well as spiritual. This belief may explain the Void Line's melancholy disposition, but also their desire to fight alongside the Astromilitarum forces of the Imperium. It is suggested that they envy normal mortals for the chance they have through death to meet Uthinek and fight at his side in the spirit world. The Void Lines have been described as encouraging on the battlefield and strongly motivational to Militarum forces. The Zalupian peoples believe that they are Uthinek's chosen peoples and that it is their responsibility to protect humanity from its greatest enemy. This may also explain the intensity and single-mindedness with which the Void Lines operate. The Zalupians, due to their faith, beliefs and simple-minded approach to life and death, are staunch loyalists to the Imperium. The Void Lines consider themselves to be battle brothers with all loyalist chapters of Adeptus Astartes and refuse under any circumstances to raise arms against them, considering other chapters to be simply other war tribes of the Emperor. To the Void Lions, the great enemy of humanity are the Tyranids, which the Zalupians call the Star Plague. The Void Lions and all Zalupian peoples utterly despise, hate, and are disgusted by the Tyranids and make active war against them, with the stance of the aggressor always. There have been reports of remarks made by Void Lions stating that they have been fighting the Star Plague for many millennia. Mysteriously, a war cry of the Void Lions when fighting the Tyranids is for Zulip, which suggests that they also fight the Tyranids as an act of vengeance for something having to do with the Zalupian solar system. However, this is mere speculation, since all Zalupian peoples who have been a fleet-based people for thousands of years still hold the memory of their homeworld close to their hearts. The Zulup solar system was recorded to have been destroyed when its star went supernova. The first recorded encounter with the Tyranids occurred on the ocean world of Tyran, in the eastern fringes in 745M41. So it is unknown what the Void Lines mean by fighting them for many millennia, and many scholars consider it to have been a figure of speech or of translation of what was actually stated. The Void Lines chapter tribe was made using gene seed from the Imperial Fists. However, this is largely speculated among Imperial scholars. The Leonicians have been seen exhibiting genetic traits uncommon to the Imperial Fist gene lineage, the ability to produce acidic saliva and voluntarily suspend in physical hibernation indicates that the chapter's gene seed has the ability to produce the Betches gland and the Susan membrane organs. The Imperial Fist themselves and all successor chapters were known to have experienced a degeneration of their gene seed which made it unable to produce these organs. With the advent of Primaris Marines, this degeneration has been resolved by Belisarius Call, and the Imperial Fist Gene Seed now has the ability to produce these organs. However, Call had not yet perfected the Primaris Marine when the Lion Guts chapter was created. I too am very skeptical, especially considering the other genetic traits the Void Lions exhibit. The Void Lions have golden yellow irises, which they inherit from the Zalupian peoples who all have golden yellow eyes. However, the Void Lion's irises are extremely reflected to light and often appear to be glowing. There also seem to be malfunctions or instabilities with their osmodular organ, as some Void Lions are physically larger than others in a drastic sense. Though uncommonly seen, the ancients of the chapter require customers' dharma because of their statue, standing several feet above other Void Lions. When he lived, the previous chapter master of the Void Lines, Marzak Isaiah, stood at a height even taller than a Primaris Marine. There are a few scholars that suggest that the Void Lines gene seed was created during the cursed founding, as it exhibits many characteristics of gene seed created during the founding. Others are quick to point that if that was the case, the chapter would be listed as such, and attribute many of the idiosyncrasies of their gene seed not to the gene seed itself, but instead to the peoples who were imbued with it. The Zalupian Predators Astromilitarum Regiment, which is composed entirely of the fleet-based Zalupian peoples, is listed as an abhuman specialist regiment. Further inquiry as to why they are listed as such reveal that the Zalupian peoples naturally developed a mutation over thousands of years to better survive in high gravity environments. This trait became recessive for some time before resurfacing. One in every 300 Zalupians born is an Ogren. Scholars who argue against the cursed founding theory state that the chapter is of the Imperial Fist's lineage, but that the mutations are present due to the Zalupian genome and that because of the Void Lines exclusively recruit from their own Zalupian peoples, such expressions are inevitable. 
However, this would suggest that the preposterous idea that the Void Lions are abhuman Astartes, which is not known to be possible and which all know the High Lords would not allow. Despite the theories that abound amongst Imperial scholars, they are all at best assumptions. Further information about the Void Lion's gene seed besides the fact that it is of Imperial Fist's origin is kept in secrecy by both the High Lords of Terra. The true extent of the chapter's mutations, if any, are unknown. The Void Lion's primary form of combat is Void Warfare, attacking Tyranid High Fleets directly with ships of their own. Due to the constant state of this struggle, the chapter's losses in assets in terms of ships are extremely high. However, this does not seem to concern the chapter. For every ship they lose in this conflict, they receive two in kind, provided for through the High Lords by the Adepsis Mechanicus. Mysteriously, the chapter does not receive its armaments from Mars, but instead from the Forge World Triplex Fowl. It is assumed by scholars that this may be due to the connection that the Lion God chapter had with the Forge World before the Zerupian solar system was annihilated due to the cataclysmic natural disaster. By tradition, Leonisan ships are never populated to capacity. A ship that could hold 300 Astartes will only contain a third of that or less, which is why the chapter's fleet is so large. The chapter as a whole had an immense fleet, which has earned the title of the Great Pride among other Astartes fleets. The Voidlands show no attachment to the ships they use, seeing them as tools of war to better annihilate their enemy. Faroa Duri, main king of the Warblade tribe of Void Lions, is said to excel in Void combat. His prowess has earned the Warblades the title as the Guardians of the Fringe, for their continual conflict with High Fleet Kraken in the Eastern Fringe. However, the Void Lions do deploy on the surface of worlds infested with Tyranids or Genesial occultists. The Bolter and Chain Sword are the preferred weapons of the Void Lions. Each of the tribes appears to be named after a weapon which the Zalupians considered sacred, and so veterans of the different tribes often wield the weapons of their namesake. The Warblade tribe veterans having large swords and chain swords, the long spears having stylized power spears, and the falling axes have brutal power axes of archaic design. The Void Lions place particular significance on close combat, through which their rage against the Tyranids can be fully released. Those who have seen Void Lions fight in close combat against the Tyranids have been shocked at the competency and duration at which they do so. Their fighting has been compared to an eternal dance of violent grace and unbridled fury that, coupled with the lion's yellow glowing eyes and beast-like vocalizations while doing so, give them the semblance of the lions of their namesake. Void Lions often charge the enemy rather than wait to be charged, and once in close combat with the Tyranids, they never retreat. The durability and strength of Void Lions are noteworthy, as they have been observed to be able to withstand grievous wounds without it affecting their competency drastically. Void Lions fight with an impressive cohesiveness at a squad level, and have been observed to become uncharacteristically and deeply withdrawn at the death of Battle Brothers, the darkness of which only regular mortals can bring them from. It is believed that this is where the chapter regularly interacts with its own peoples. Void Lions are not above self-sacrifice to destroy the enemy. The greatest example of this scene during the Decimation Wars, in which Aegur Ture, a veteran Leonisin and black maid of the Void Lion Decimation Fleet, directed his battle barge into the moor of the largest Tyranid bioship of the enemy, after dozens of Lion ships had sacrificed themselves so that the maneuver would be successful, the explosion of which wounded the beast enough for the Militarum Imperial ships to destroy the abomination. His renowned last words became a battle cry of the Void Lions, and was not yelled in passion and fury, but stated with the spirit of gravity, defiance, and the arrogance that comes with a natural sense of dominance. Death to the Star Plague. We are not prey. Even on the troop level, Void Lions will put themselves in harm's way merely to wound the enemy, so that the tribesmen behind him may deliver the killing blow. The Void Lions are also known for extensive use of ship-to-surface orbital bombardments to completely eradicate gene stealer cults from overrun hive cities. The Void Lions frequently ally with the Death Watch under the direction of the Ordo Xenus. Claws and sweeping shields have been known to serve in the Death Watch, and Maid King Kam Navar served in the Death Watch for several years before being chosen as Maid King of the Long Spears. The Leonis in armor is primarily dark bronze in color. The pauldrons of the Void Lions are black, with dark bronze trim. The heraldry of the Void Lions is of a white, roaring lion profile, which is displayed on both pauldrons. The color of the Astartes' helmets depends on their rank. 
battle line troops have black helmets, assault marines have grey helms. Veteran void lines, claws, have bone-colored helms, and all Primaris marines, regardless of combat designation, have red helms. HQ Helms, among the firstborn marines of the chapter, are bone-colored with a red stripe down the middle, while HQ Helms of the Primaris have red helms with a black stripe down the middle. The Void Lines are known to paint segments of their leg armor black and painting tribal markings on them in the color of the specific Void Line tribe they are from. It is noted that in all pictorial renditions of the Void Lions, they are in golden armor, as opposed to the dark bronze color the armor is in actuality. The reason for such is a matter of honor. The Leonisans do not war for accolades and glory. They do not fight to be recognized and praised as the Emperor's angels, even though that is what they are. They are reclusive, except when necessity demands that they act with those superior to them, the mortals of the Imperium. Their only desire is to be unleashed upon the Tyranid Xeno species in protection of the Emperor's domain. The only honor that they have ever asked of the Imperium is to be portrayed in gold. Acolyte Horatio Coyotes, Ordo Xenus, M41 It is for this reason the Void Lion's Adeptus Astartes are portrayed in gold armor. It is considered an insult to the chapter to portray them in their true colors, and the mistake has led to several planets call for aid to be promptly ignored until the depictions are destroyed and replaced.